Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to Venn diagrams. Before we get started on Venn diagrams though, there's just one definition we need to go over, and that's the definition of the universe of discourse. In the statement of a problem, the stated or implied set of all things under discussion at a given time would be the universe of discourse. When we're talking about Venn diagrams and set theory in general, we represent the universe of discourse with the letter U. So U represents the set of all things that we're looking at in that particular problem. So U, and we call it the universal set. So we're going to say universal set, and that just is everything that we're talking about. Everything that exists in this universe exists in set U, and then there are pieces of it that would, would go into play. So in studying reactions to a proposal to give all CUNY professors 40% raises, the universe of discourse I say would be, I might change that to might be because maybe you have some suggestions too, but I think the people who would want to voice their opinion on this would be the CUNY professors themselves. Maybe the CUNY staff, right? Why are the professors getting 40% raises and not the staff? The administration, the students, the New York City taxpayers, the New York State taxpayers, all of these groups of people would have some input here. So they would be considered the universe of discourse. As mentioned, the universe of discourse or the universal set is usually represented by the letter U. So previously I said that sets should be given single capital letter names except for U. That's because U is reserved for the universal set. The universal set could be given to you. So I might say U contains these elements. And then in that particular universe, that's all that exists. Or the universe could be implied. So if it's something dealing with numbers, you might just assume that the universe is the set of real numbers. And that's fair too. When we use this universal set, we very commonly use it with Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are very commonly used in set theory. They are diagrams founded or invented by John Venn. And what they are is they consist of overlapping circles. Very commonly, we only use two or three because it's really hard to have four overlapping circles. So we might draw two, one, two, and then we would put the universe, we use a rectangle to represent, so this would be the universe. And then these are the sets within the universe. We might call this one set A and this one set B. So we usually label our sets as, as needed or based on the information we're given. Um, so you can see here that this particular universe, when we have two overlapping circles, we have four regions. There's one region that's outside the, the overlapping circles. That would be anything that's in the universe that's not in either set A or set B. We have this here. This here is called the overlap. And we'll talk more about the overlap in the next section. Then we have two more regions. So I said, okay, I'm like shading and that's silly. There's region one, here's region two. Then here is region three and here's region four. Region three are the elements that are in A, but not also in B. And region four are the elements in B that are not also in A. So every element in the universe gets represented in one of those four regions and only in one of those four regions. We do not have, if, if A is lowercase a, is an element in the universe, we don't put A in two different spots. It goes in one spot and only one spot. So this would be if we have two sets in our universe, if we have three sets in our universe, we draw our two overlapping ones and the third one goes underneath, right? Because if you had it next to the second one, now these two have no overlap. And what if they have something in common, then we would have an issue. So when we have three sets, we put one underneath or you know one above just so that they all have their the regions in common. In this case, we do have eight regions and those eight regions would be filled in accordingly. So we'll call this one A, B, C. And we can see our eight regions. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we'll talk more about these regions in, in a little bit. This is just supposed meant to be a introduction to Venn diagrams. So just to recap, because I wrote this out and forgot about it, uh, Venn diagram is a diagram with overlapping circles, which are representing the sets within a universe, which is the rectangle. All the areas of overlapping or not overlapping part uh, pieces are called regions. And every element in the universe belongs to exactly one region. And I put that in bold and underlined it because that is so important. As I mentioned on the previous slide, if we have some element in the universe, it goes in one of the four regions and that's it. One place. 
Okay, so let's draw a Venn diagram to display these sets. We have our universe, which is defined by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have set M, which is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And we have T, which is 1, 3, 6, 10. So we have two sets that are not the universe, right? The universe, we use a rectangle. Everything else, we use circles. So I need two overlapping circles. And we're going to put these inside our universe, inside a rectangle. And for some reason, that's being weird. So we're going to put U over here. And then we're going to name our two sets. Well, they were given to us. We're just going to label them within our Venn diagram. And now we're going to fill in what we know. Generally, when we fill in Venn diagrams, we want to start with the overlap. So anything that is represented in both M and T, that's what we want to do first. So we're going to start by filling in the overlap. All right, so what do M and T have in common? They both have a 6 and they both have a 10. So within the overlap, we're going to put a 6 and a 10. And that way you can see... 6 and 10 are contained in set M, right? That circle representing set M. And they're also within set T. So that's why we put them in the overlap because we only write every value once. I might go up to my universe too and just cross those out so I know I've already used them. Now, what's left in M? We have 2, 4, and 8. 2, 4, 8. 2, 4, 8. And in T, we have 1 and 3. 1 and 3. Anything that wasn't represented, so what do we have left? We have 5, 7, and 9. Those will go in the rectangle, but not within the circles. So we're just going to put 5, 7, 9. And you can put them anywhere in the rectangle that you'd like. That's just where I happen to choose to, to put them. So this would be one example of drawing a Venn diagram. Okay, another example. This time we have three sets within our universe. So we're going to draw three overlapping circles. And remember, the third one goes underneath. And just like we did last time, we're going to start with the overlap. Now, there's quite a few. There's actually four regions of overlap. This one here, which I'll, I'll erase that just so I have the space, that's the triple overlap. So that region is part of all three circles. That's the only region that's part of all three circles. So anything that's in all three sets, is there anything that's in set A, B, and C? It looks like the letter C is, so C, 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 C. So C would go in our triple overlap. Now, the other regions, like this one here, this would be elements that are only in A and B, but they're not also in C. So is there anything that's in A and B? No, there's not. So we're gonna leave this region blank, right? Nothing's gonna go in there because there is no overlap between A and B besides that element C, but we've already included C there. This one here is referring to anything that A and C have in common. So do A and C have anything in common? No, they don't. So we're going to leave that one blank too. And then this one here, this represents B and C. Do B and C have anything in common? Yes, they do. They have F and G. So in, uh-oh, I lost my set A. Sad day. So in, oh, now I don't have enough space. Right here, we're going to put an F and a G because that's in both sets B and C. Then we're going to fill in everything else that's left in set A. So A has an A and a B. So we make sure we put it in the region that only is in set A, right? There's nothing else there. A and B, A and B. And then what I get rid of F and G. B still has an E. So we're going to put an E here. E. And C has a D. So we'll put a D here. And do we have anything left in our universe? Yes, we have an H. So H needs to go somewhere in the rectangle. Maybe we'll just put it up there. And this is how we would represent this particular universe. A Venn diagram is a diagram with overlapping circles or sets with within a universe or rectangle. Okay, so I've said that quite a few times. Hopefully it's starting to stick now. Now, we've talked about elements that belong in regions, but there's also elements that don't go into, or that are not part of certain sets. So the area within the universe and not in A is called the complement of A. And in for this particular video, we're going to use, it looks like A apostrophe, what we really read it A naught or A complement. So A complement is any value in the universe or any element in the universe that's not in set A. So if we go back here, um, H, for example, would not be in set A, right? A does, H is not an element of, of set A. So we would say that H is in the complement of A. Okay, so... One more time, we're going to draw a Venn diagram to represent the following. So we have our universe, and then we have two sets. So I only need two circles here. And we're going to call this U, and this is going to be set E. 
set S, and we start with the overlap. So what do they have in common? They have a four in common. So we'll put a four in the overlap. Then set E also has two, six, and eight. Two, six, and eight. And set S has a one and a nine. One and nine. And what do we have left? We have three, five, and seven. So three, five, and seven. So here's the Venn diagram. And now we're gonna use the Venn diagram to find the complement of each set, starting with E complement. So this, these are all of the elements that are not in E, all of the elements not in E. So here is circle E. What's everything not contained in this circle? Well, I see a one and a nine and a three, five, and seven. Normally we do wanna put these in order, so really the nine should be at the end, but I saw the nine first, so it ended up second. Okay, what's an S complement? So this time, we're looking for everything not contained in the squiggles, right? Because that's representing set S. What do we see that's not there? There's two, six, eight, three, five, and seven. So that would be the complement of set S. Everything that's in the universe that's not in set S. And then lastly, what's in the complement of the universe? Well, the universe represents everything, so there's nothing that's not there. So the complement would be nothing, and we represent nothing in set theory with either the empty set, right? There should be nothing in that set, or you can say the null set. So we've talked about that before, the empty set or the null set. That just means there's nothing in that particular set. Hopefully this was a nice introduction to Venn diagrams. Thank you for stopping by.